I think he told Brian Kilmeade, and you've reported on this, uh, when uh, they had Radio Row at the White House last week. So Brian Kilmeade from Fox and Friends, who also has his own radio show, uh, he told them that he had called every Gold Star family. Yeah, he said. Well, he said everyone, everyone, and then he and then he said, well, at least I can say virtually everybody I've called. That was on Tuesday morning, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then later that same day, uh, there were there was an email exchange or exchanges between the White House and the Pentagon, and which I was able to view. And uh, in those exchanges, the White House aides uh, made clear that they knew that what the president said was not entirely uh, accurate, let's say, or or at least an overstatement. They knew he had not contacted all of them. In fact, they didn't have the contact information for all of the deceased American military personnel. The email was requesting the the names and the the notices of death, which is the names of of who, who died, how, where, and the contact information, the next of kin, including telephone numbers. And it was clear from the exchanges that the reason they were asking for this was so that the president could, quote, ASAP. Uh, they wanted the information, quote, ASAP, but it was clear that they that the reason that they wanted it was so that the president could make sure that, in in essence, the thing to to turn the untrue statement he made on Tuesday into a true statement as soon as possible. So he was going to go back and call all the ones that he had not yet called? That's what that's what it, it appeared was was the idea here, and um, and there has been other news organizations have done some reporting that sort of buttresses this. Um, uh, in particular, I, I'll tip my hat to the Atlantic that's done some good reporting, uh, showing that uh, uh, the you recall uh, of course two months ago I think it was uh, August twenty first it was late August. Um, the uh, uh, the Navy destroyer in the Pacific collided with another ship. Mm-hmm. Um, that again, two months ago, just this week, the president sent a letter to two of those families, maybe more, but at least two were contacted by the Atlantic, and it was FedEx overnight. When it absolutely positively has to be there overnight, uh, those th- that's how the letters were sent this week. This week, so uh, you know, and all. Also, reporting of another other news organizations. Letters, not phone calls, of course. Right, anyway, just... right. The reporting of other news organizations, the combined reporting of several news organizations appears to show the following. Uh, 20, they have reached 25 families of, of military personnel uh, killed this year, and nearly half of those said they had not been contacted in any way by mm-hmm. the president. Wow. Okay. So when he says virtually every, I call virtually everybody, we have to have a pretty expansive definition of the word virtually to think that, <laughs> that you know, that it was accurate. Yeah. Um, the numbers I saw were like 13 out of 25 had not been contacted. Right? That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was right. just short of, so, of half had not now, been contacted. When you say virtually, you think 23, 24, <laughs> don't you? Right? Pretty yeah. close. That's to the my number. definition yeah. of virtually. Yeah. 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 So, um, <laughs> So yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't quite right, but I mean the significance of what I was able to disclose is that it well, shows that the White House knew it wasn't right and that they were intent on fixing it ASAP. Well, let me hear what it, it, it what strikes me is uh, so I was at um, the briefing, I forget which day it was now this week when last week when Sarah Sa- Huckabee Sanders this was, I think maybe Monday it was the first day after. Congresswoman Wilson had made her comments. That was that day, and I wanted okay. to. It was the day that that morning Donald Trump said, "I have proof that what she said was not true." Mm-hmm. So I specifically made sure that I got to that briefing because I wanted to see the proof and hear the proof. Mm-hmm. She didn't have any. That's mm-hmm. when she all she said was, "Well, somebody, other people were in the room when he made the call." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was the day before General Kelly himself came out. Yeah. She spent a lot of time at that news conference saying, here's why it took so long, because there's a process. And she detailed this process, that the Pentagon does all the research and what happened, and they put a report together. Every time she said someone is killed, they put this report together. And once that's done, then it comes to the White House. Mm -hmm. And then the White House does its double check of each one, Mm -hmm. and then that goes to the president Mm -hmm. for him to respond. Mm -hmm. So if what you say is true, 
that they didn't know at the White House, that well, contradicts what she said, that they have a report on everybody who was killed. Well, that's a good good point. Um, I, I guess I would say it's possible that they had all the information in the White House military office, but not in the Oval Somewhere, Office or something. But, yeah. and, but for, for whatever reason, the people, the top people in the, in the Oval Office and the National Security Council had to contact the defense secretary's office, and that's who the email went to. Was the was the the top executive secretary for James Mattis? Um, so for whatever reason, you know, maybe it was because they didn't have it, maybe because they didn't know they had it, but that's why they had to do it. Um, but yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good observation. I, I just while you were thinking, just reminded me of that whole mm-hmm. conversation. I mean, I heard her explain all the, and and justifying their. She explained that justifying why it was 12 days before Donald Trump said anything because she said it takes that long for that process to work. Yeah. So therefore, she said they had just gotten the papers the day before, so that's why he didn't say anything for 12 days. Well, with the news reports today, we knew right away there exactly. were four exactly. soldiers yeah, killed yeah. in the air. And to so, me, you know, uh, we need to back up and say, how did this all start? And it all started because the president had not, after 12 days, said a word about the deaths of these four Americans. And, and, and that's why people started asking, you know, yeah, why right. haven't you said anything and have you contacted the families, which led to everything else we've been talking about. But the genesis of it was the president's failure to talk about it publicly. Just to um, say even, something even about Even briefly. Yeah. Or, or not even say anything, you know, just issue a statement, say, you know, uh, yeah. acknowledging the, their, their sacrifice. Right. None. Nothing. So that's, that's how it all started. All right.